everyone, and welcome to our stream. Can everybody uh, in the chat hear us? Uh, can you see us? Can you see us? Uh, can you hear us? Hiya. Hello. Can you see? How do we sound? Is our microphones good? How you, how you um, doing, guys? Can you hear us? All God? Awesome. All okay. Right. Uh, so we're really glad to see all of you here again on this lovely Sunday afternoon. Ooh, so many people in the chat. No echo? Oh, perfect. We actually, a bunch of us got new mics to, you know, make sure you could all hear us and everything. Ah, oh, so good. Okay. So again, thanks for joining us for JTNYC's second stream ever. Uh, today, we're going to be interviewing Japanese to English translator Andrew Hodgson, who's also known by the moniker Steiner. I'm just going to call him Steiner for today because that's what I always call him and stuff. So uh, we've got a whole bunch of interesting questions to get through today, uh, but feel free to ask him questions in the chat. We'll get through as many of them as we can. Um, I guess we should uh, also introduce the panel today because it's three instead of two now, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, today's event is hosted by our group, Japanese Translators of New York City, so JTNYC. Um, and that's where new and experienced translators come together, do hands-on activities, uh, translation activities, and sometimes we have guest speakers like we do today. Um, I'm Christy Fernandez. I'm founder and president of this group. Here with me, um, I have Kanisha Thomas, hey. uh, the vice president here at JTNYC. And then we also have Japanese to English translator, David Evelyn. Yep, um, he'll, yes, he'll be helping out um, as our stream coordinator. We also interviewed him for the last show. We loved him so much that, you know, he's coming, helping us on, uh, with all of this and everything. Um, so he'll be handling all the technical stuff and also monitoring the chat to make sure uh, nothing gets too, too wild in the chat or anything. Um, yeah, so that's about us. That's our group. If you ever want to join uh, JTNYC, just go to... Facebook and search Japanese translators of NYC, we should pop right up and uh, I'll be waiting to hear from you. Yep. So about our guest today, uh, today we're going to be interviewing, as I mentioned, uh, Steiner, Andrew Hodgson, um, who is a British translator with over half a decade of experience in Japanese to English media localization. His credits include the popular light novel series In Another World with My Smartphone, as well as visual novel titles such as DSC Ray, I hope I said that right, uh, Raging Loop, and Stein's Gate. Other than novels and video games, he has also worked on various art books and manga series over the course of his career. And right now he offers his services to various companies as a freelancer and works on a uh, transparent and communicative approach to his field via social media. And with that out of the way, let's sit back, relax, and let's meet our guest. Yep. Hey Steiner, how's it going? Let's see. Can we get him on the screen? There we go. Hey. Hello. There we go. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> there we uh, go. Okay. <clears throat> Hello. Hi. Uh, how's everyone doing? Yeah. Everyone's, we're doing uh, good. We're good. How are you good. doing? Uh, we're big chill right now. Yeah, I'm doing quite well. Just, uh, you know, weathering as best I can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I see you're in the, yep. uh, the fallout bunker. That's cool. With yeah. the frogs. With the frogs behind you. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So I... Nice. I guess uh, to start, um, for people who don't know, would you mind explaining where your moniker Steiner comes from? Like, how did you come up with that? Uh, yeah, where did it originate? Ah, well, um, so at the very, very earliest point of my translation career, I, I was attached uh, very heavily to Steins Gate, uh, which ended up being the first official project of mine that I had uh, published. Um, and within the story of Steins Gate, there is a character, uh, the, the main character actually, uh, Okabe Rintaro, uh, and he sort of uses a lot of bizarre terms. He's, he's you know, he's, he's, he's a bit of a weirdo. Um, but one of the terms he uses within the story is reading Steiner. Mm -hmm. uh, and because at the time I was so heavily embroiled in Steins Gate material from uh, side translating uh, manga and stuff like that, and obviously being on the main project itself, I, I took the mantle uh, reading Steiner um, during those early days. And, and as the years went by, I, I gradually uh, weaned away the, um, the first word. I took that away. I mean, one, it's a mouthful. And two, I didn't want to be completely attached to the Steinsgate property mm -hmm. in terms of Monica. So uh, it's now just Steiner, which is uh, basically how it evolved. Yeah, I mean, easy to say, easy to remember. I think a lot of us 
know you just almost as Steiner, so it's like yeah. funny. Yeah. Uh, if, yeah. you, if, you, if you call me reading Steiner, I know that you probably knew of me a long time ago, basically. Very cool. So besides that, so now that we know the origin of your name, your moniker, um, why don't we go into the origin of you yourself? Like how you, well, not your, you know. How you Wait a second. <laughs> uh, okay. But anyway. Yeah, I mean, so in, in high school, um, I did not do so great uh, in my classes. I, I, I wasn't that hard of a worker. Um, I, I just sort of got a lot distracted and I ended up teaching myself. I was into games, uh, Japanese games, uh, Japanese stuff online. I, I was since middle school, your, your regular sort of run of the mill weeaboo, you know what I mean? Um, and then a bit later, uh, I, I started to think, well, hang on, this uh, is an absolute wealth of media that I don't currently have access to. Uh, and if I teach myself Japanese, um, there, were, there were no educational opportunities for it at the time, obviously. Um, but if I, so I basically set about teaching myself Japanese um, over a long period of time. Uh, you know, you, you do you do flashcard reps, you look at dictionary extensions and such like that. And then, so I would say that there's definitely a curve where y you barely know anything, right? Um, but then you think you know a lot. <laughs> so uh, I definitely sat there for a while. I was sitting there for a good few years, I think. Um, but I'd say it, it, after a while, obviously. I mean, I would like to believe that I, I know what I'm doing now, right? <laughs> that, would, that would be nice. That would be good. Um, yeah. So when did the, I guess, the desire to learn Japanese become a desire to become a translator to start doing all of that stuff? Um, so I would say that uh, it, it, it was never necessarily an active... Um, pursuit for me, uh, so much as something that actually just sort of happened. Uh, in the early days, um, I was involved in a lot of uh, threads and such about, because the Steins Gate anime was airing in 2011. Uh, I was involved in discussion threads on that. Um, you know, I used a, a name and stuff because, you know, anonymity, right? I, I, I don't want that. I want, you know, the attention. Please give me the attention, right? Mm -hmm. That's how it was. Um, but basically, I, I adopted the moniker, as I say. And then one day I sort of saw that there was a translation project going for the Steins Gate visual novel, like a fan fan translation project. And I joined the, um, the, the IRC server, their IRC channel, Internet Relay Chat. It's, yeah. I mean, people still use it, but not as much, right? Um, but I joined that channel and I just sort of attached myself to that project. Um, I was, it was during this period that I was absolutely at the peak of, I absolutely know what I'm doing. I 100% know what I'm doing. Uh, and obviously the reality was uh, I had no idea what I was doing. Mm -hmm. But um, as, as it goes, I ended up getting completely uh, just sort of thrown into it, you know? Um, I didn't have any other prospects at the time. And I was like, huh, well, maybe if I do continue with this, I can turn it into something. So you basically no. went... So you basically went from, you know, just learning Japanese and self-teaching um, and doing these fan translation projects and that kind of turned into a career is what you're trying to say? Like, is that how? Yes, it effectively blossomed on its own through the contacts that I made uh, and through the companies that I ended up coming into touch with. Mm -hmm. So was all of your like um, translation skill honing, so to speak, was that all with like fan groups? Did you do stuff like on your own? Yeah, or it, was, yeah. it was mostly with the... Uh, the, any translation that I did in the early days uh, would obviously be significantly lacking by modern standards, but I sort of polished my skills on on stuff like Steins Gate spin-off manga or drama CDs uh, or songs even. Uh, I ended up doing, like my, I think, the major, like a, a large part of my contribution to the Steins Gate translation project itself was that I got them to put translated versions of the songs in, right? Mm -hmm. And I did like a, a small, a comparatively small portion of the body text, right? Mm -hmm. So... That's also why I wanted to distance my association with the moniker uh, from that from that specific title. Sorry, my cat did a thing. Uh, from that specific title, because at the end of the day, it, it, the bulk of the achievement was not mine there, and I didn't want to completely rest on its laurels forever, right? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So you were like, all right, that's good and all, but I'm going to move on and, you know, do all yeah, these uh, Basically, it, it progressed from the fan translation project to meeting all these people in this community. And obviously, um, many members of the visual novel professional community uh, come from those kinds of origins. Uh, so mm -hmm. through those people, I met a further opportunity. So like through those connections, I'm guessing um, for visual novels and all stuff like that, they kind of reached out to you, like knowing that you were into... Um... Um, I would say that I did actively, uh, it took a while for people to start reaching out to me more. Uh, I did actively pursue uh, jobs in the... Can, can you hear that? Yeah, is that a cat? Yeah, that but... cat? yeah I'm sorry. <laughs> all good. I'm, I apologize, my cat is... Fussing around. That's okay. Um, you already told us that your cat can open doors, so I'm not really surprised. <laughs> by yeah, I, I didn't expect. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's fine. Okay. Um, please, not, please remind me where I was. Well, no worries, because uh, I was actually just going to ask you about your first projects besi uh, besides Steins Gate. So, what were right. your other, like first projects, and and so, how did they go? What were they like? So, Steins Gate itself. Um, it, it, it actually, while the, while the fan translation project began in 2011, mm -hmm. um, it wouldn't actually get a published release until 2014. Right. Uh, so in that kind of interim area, I I applied to to general Eroge companies um, and sort of just you know cut, broke the teeth in on that kind of stuff. I did a I don't even remember the specific titles anymore, but it was basically a series of short uh, Nuki Gay titles, uh, which is like. Uh, sorry, it's like uh, brief, brief uh, uh, adult games, basically, mm -hmm. that I did early, very early on in my career. And then in 2014 or 15, I believe, um, I got a job offer from a friend who had... See, we'd been making inroads because we wanted to translate a game called Chaos Head, mm -hmm. um, which is in the same series as Steins Gate. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'd been trying for a while to, to, to figure out a way to get this script to the people that needed it, because we basically had a functional translation. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I would maybe want to redo it, though, like by modern standards, but but we had a functional translation, so we shopped around for a long time. We looked, and we realized that there was a British-based publisher that had published uh, Steins Gate on consoles. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and, and they were they are P-Cube. P -Cube, uh, P -Cube. Right? Yeah. yeah. So from there, we, we got to talking to them. We, we were hoping maybe we could figure out a way to get Chaos Head released via them because they had ties to the Japanese side. Uh, mm -hmm. That did unfortunately not pan out, but I did start to get job offers from P-Cube, and the first uh, significant one was a uh, Valkyrie Drive, uh, Bikuni. Oh, okay. Is that the, um, was that for the PS Vita? Was that that one? Uh, yes, it was for the PS Vita. So that's interesting. Um, I definitely want to go straight into, into video uh, game translation. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, so please. Um, so what was translating those first games like? The, the first <laughs> it was interesting. Um, uh, Valkyrie Drive was uh, split between uh, me and another translator. Um, and it Only was- Only two of you? Only two of you? What? The whole yes. game? Mm. Yes. Oh, wow. uh, one of us handled the, the, the main, the, like the core common root of the game and the other because uh, it splits in two, and the other translated the uh, the split the split paths, and I trans uh, yeah the other translated the comp path. Wow, is that like how many characters or words or you know hours even? And was that I mean for a whole? It was it was a, it was a, it was quite a while. Uh, it was a significant uh, uh, it was a significant project. Uh, it took a, it took a good few months at the very least, um, but the workload was yes evenly split. We had one editor. Uh, and he he bridged the the style, you know what I mean, basically over it, uh, the style differences. Because obviously, when you have a large project and you assign multiple translators, uh, some some companies might think it's smarter to just throw a lot of translators at it so you can uh, you know get it done faster. But that brings with it a whole plethora of issues, including yeah. inconsistency in style. Uh, when I think Persona Five came out. Atlas was boasting about having the most translation uh, translators on a project they've ever had. Like, yes, and it was just like that's not a good thing at all. <laughs> it was not. I remember. Re yes, I remember reading that and thinking, why is this a selling point? Yeah. I, who wrote it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, quantity does definitely not equate to, to quality in that case. I, for the most part, as long as it's reasonable, I would say that you want fewer translators and an editor that is familiar with their styles to sort of gloss over any 
differences. Right. And uh, I, I think that the reason why quali- uh, quantity over quality is not the case is uh, because the way that you get these uh, the games, right? Like the, the format in which you receive these games is not conductive to a lot no. of people working on something at the same time, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, in a lot of cases, I mean, so for video games, uh, the majority of my translation of video games has been via spreadsheets, which have effectively become my bread and butter way of translating. Um, so, so as far as... Sorry? Literally, there's just the Japanese and and for the most part, yes. You have one column for the Japanese text, one column for the English text next to it, and, and then perhaps a third column for your editor if you're working closely with the editor. And they'll put in like their edited script. Yeah, they'll put in your edit, and, and that can that you can look over that if you want. It really depends by project. Um, in some cases where you don't use Excel or you aren't as closely in touch with your editor, it'll just be a simple case of sending it off to them. But uh, in more collaborative uh Things like games, basically. Very cool. So besides yeah. that, what was the workflow like? So besides, oh, uh, you know, on video games, not even on that one project in oh, general. It, it, it has varied. Uh, on Valkyrie Drive specifically, it was a case of I was given the, uh, the just the files. I was just handed like files in a zip, like a big locked zip, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and they were like, okay, well, here's your deadline. Go nuts. And I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. So I start working on that, and I start as I finish the files, we hand them over to the editor. Uh, the editor looks over the files, consults me if anything comes up. Uh, but then there have been more closely collaborative titles where, for example, we've done things via Google, uh, shared Google Sheets. Uh, so in that way, the editor can leave comments, or the editor can edit live and, and follow behind you, uh, or something like that. And, and that it opens itself up to much more close communication, I believe. Very cool. So I'm wondering, and I think... I already know the answer, but did you get screenshots or did you get to see anything at all while you were translating? Uh, <laughs> um, I, I, I find that to be a luxury, uh, honestly. You, you generally don't have any actual access to the build of what you're working on. Um, there have meaning, been- Meaning some, that you literally don't see screenshots. You don't yeah, know. You don't even, you don't even see, yeah. some, in some cases, you don't even know what the game will fully look, look like, like yet. Yeah, because you know? they don't even have yeah. a finished build. Like, like, if you're, if you're translating a game that's still in development, you're absolutely going to get nothing. Uh, oh, if, if you're translating a game that's already been released, uh, the client may comp you a copy uh, if you're lucky, if you're very lucky, right? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. for the most part, um, you're going to have to try to source that kind of thing yourself if it's available. But in many cases, there is nothing. So you're going solely off the text. Mm-hmm. You, you could be writing a character that you <coughs> internally envision as, as, a, as, as someone young and small, but <laughs> once the visuals come around and you've written them, they may actually be enormous and, 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 and very brash, you know? Oh, it's yeah. hard to tell entirely through dialogue, right? right? Mm-hmm. Or there could be like, you didn't know that it was many of this one, you know, character. Yes. Or exactly. Like right, that. exactly. So, so there was there was a game that I worked on. Uh, mm-hmm. In I'm not going to specifically single it out, but there was a game that I worked on. Uh, I remember that I translated this scene uh, involving a character going somewhere, and it is guarded by a creature, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but then when release comes around, uh, and I actually play the game, um, we come to that scene, and it is two creatures. And there was nothing in the text that could have prepared me for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was simply multiple creatures. And sometimes it's a toss-up. You have no idea. Uh, but the text still obviously treated it as if it was one. one. Uh, two and clearly on the screen, but what can you do, right? You know what uh, the only thing is, like with Japanese, you uh, can... Ultimately, I would, I would say context itself is a luxury. Yeah. Um, if, you can, if you get a project where you can communicate with uh, even the Japanese side or anything... Um, you're very lucky. Uh, there is one project I'm on right now that I can't mention where I am very, very fortunate to have access to a full debug build of the game so I can access it at any point, mm-hmm. skip to any screen, uh, check anything but context. And that is, it improves the workflow significantly. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, that's super rare. Like that just does not usually happen, right? Yeah, it, it's basically never happened in my entire career except for this one project. Yeah, I was about to say, uh, for... Games, like, you know, for games, right, when you have, like, uh, a mob of enemies, right, sometimes they'll just use singular and you're just at the mercy of your intuition. 
Yeah, you, you have to, you have to, it's a toss up. A lot of the time it's a toss up. You have to make a, a judgment call right. and sometimes the judgment call is right, but sometimes it's off. Yeah, and exactly. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering on the video game project specifically, um, was your editor bilingual? Did you have back and forth dialogue uh, with the editor? You know, just all across your your projects. I'm sure each project is very different. So yes, um, for the most part, the editors that I work with are not bilingual. They're mostly uh, mo they're mostly monolingual. At least uh, at least not bilingual, including Japanese. Um, mm. But so I would say that for the majority, this is. This definitely varies by company and by individual experience. But um, in my case, I have had the good fortune to often be in touch with my editor. I have had the good fortune to be able to have my editor be just a Discord message away, right? Oh, that's so good. Yeah, so you worked closely with them, basically. Were you able to like question edits or anything? Uh, yeah, but in, in general, uh, unless it's someone I'm really unfamiliar with, I, I trust my editor. To make the right calls, um, my edit, my editor, for example, for uh, in another world with my smartphone, um, I I've worked with him for a good many years and I trust him uh, significantly. So, if he made uh, if he wanted to make some like large edit, he would absolutely tell me. Um, mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but then there are cases. So there are cases where. In, in my career, it's either been I've been in close touch with my editor or I have never spoken to my editor. That's mm -hmm. that's really it. There's, yeah, there's been cool. no real middle ground for me. There's no gray in that at all. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're either completely disconnected from the process or it's or it's an involved process mm -hmm. for me. At least. Interesting. So moving on to another project that you did, a video game project. So what was it like uh, working on uh, the Sword Art Online um, property, the anime license? Is ah, yes. So... That was very unique. Um, it was my first time, obviously, working on a anime licensed uh, title, um, and obviously we had to check for uh, terminology consistency. We we kept a database, that kind of thing. Um, I don't want to talk too much about it, obviously, f but um, there are, I mean, there are there are limiting factors in play as far as what I can actually say about the process. Sure. But it, you know, we we utilized translation memory, uh, and it was it was a little bit more involved than than simple Excel, you know. Yeah. You, you don't you don't just get a get a file and send you away, right? Yeah, because it, uh, uh, yeah. for like most of those big companies, they tend to use uh, CAT tools, uh, computer assisted yeah. translation tools. So uh, some of them use uh, there's like Trados and uh, MemoQ is very big. I think most people use MemoQ nowadays. Yeah, uh, I remember uh, I remember though the uh, the 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 translation database can sometimes be more of a hindrance than a help. Yeah. Uh, because it will try, it will, it will, it will, it will try to help you right. by completely inserting something for an easy line, right? Right. Um, but then, like, you'll get something where it's like a line has uh, baka in it, right? Yeah. And 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 then it inserts, "I'm going to beat you to death" right. into a line, and you, you don't want that. Right. You don't want that. <laughs> that doesn't suit this part. <laughs> but um, in in general, it is interesting. It has. It has helped, uh, for example, in one project where I used a uh, computer-assisted translation software, um, there was an entire segment which was basically a repeat of a previous segment, and I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't have noticed if, if it hadn't had that in the database because right. the work was quite spaced out, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And who knows if you were even working on that part. You could have had exactly. That's, that. that's 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 the thing. That's the thing uh, because because this it, because it shares the translation memory between translate. This is actually leads into another slight drawback, though, because if you're on a project that has multiple translators with distinct styles mm -hmm. and they're all feeding into the memory bank, it's going to conflate those differences in writing, uh, mm -hmm. and it can cause issues sometimes. We actually have a question in the chat um, talking about uh, databases. It says, how common are those kind of databases for licensed titles or otherwise on larger scale games? Um, I would say that... For anime licensed properties, they're going to compile a database um, because they generally do not want to keep. The, they generally want to keep it consistent with the most popular version of, uh, mm -hmm. of that franchise uh, in mm -hmm. English. Um, so I would say that for anime licensed titles, at least, it is probably a common practice. Yes. Yeah. It, it, I would hope. I would hope. That one, one would. One would hope. But if it isn't. 
they need to, they need to not they need to not be doing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, that's the best way to say it, really. But um, and I was also curious about uh, your work on Dies Ire. I hope I'm saying that right again. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Just, uh, and about and right about to uh, visual novels now. Yeah. Okay. Because that, 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 is, is a visual novel, so well, it's kind of you know, it's a distinction, right? It is a visual novel, yes. There is a there is a distinction. Mm -hmm. oh, yes, and so what? How would you define a visual novel for people who don't know? Uh, so, like they, they, so I mean, a visual novel in English is 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 generally what they refer to in Japan as is you know an adventure game mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. or, a, or a novel game, right? Right. And, uh, generally, if it has the 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 static, the static storytelling, and is for the most part like, you know, a a process in which it it's hard to describe. See, the thing is, there are many distinctions. Uh, a lot of people have different uh, variations. For example, I would not consider a, a Rams game a visual novel, right? Or or identical. I would consider those video games because there's functionally nothing different between any of those things to Fire Emblem, right? And no one, not many people are going to call Fire Emblem a visual novel, Or, right? like, you can even, like, make the distinction even further where uh, stuff like uh, Tokimeki Memorial or Dating Sims, like, those are... Right, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's, it's a fine line. There's definitely a fine line. I mean, <clears throat> you generally... I mean... Did you hear that? No. no. Okay, good, because someone's, there's a car outside. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably your cat. I don't know. I, I blame it all for your cat. It's probably better. That's fine. That's right. yeah, but a visual novel is basically, it, 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 it's a text-heavy game mm -hmm. that uses a specific kind of character icon storytelling right. um, to continue, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, very cool. So how is the translation process with that and the formatting of scripts and things different from video games? Um, again, it varies. Um you tend to find that the visual novel community is a lot smaller than the broader um, video game community. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of the companies actually share programmers amongst themselves. Um, so you tend to find that the they design things in similar ways or that uh, scripts can end up being extracted in similar ways. For the most part, again, it is largely Excel, um, uh, Excel spreadsheets that I've translated my visual novels on. Uh, Diasire, we did this way. Actually, we did Diasire on a Excel-style Google Sheet where we could all collaborate. Mm -hmm. We kept like a terms database and such. I maybe would have included a screenshot of that, but it's it's been many years, so <laughs> I don't know where it went. <laughs> um, how but, many? Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. How many people were working on that project? That um, there were a few of us. Yes, there was. Um, there was Kenyan Conch. Uh, got it. Yeah. And John, obviously. That was like, yeah, it was like three, it was three or four. I mean, it depends on one of them. Sort of had a half translation, half uh, overseeing role. So, okay. but uh, but um, yeah, there were about three, three to four, basically. And um, yeah, I would say for for Dis Irae, like uh, first of all, uh, can we, can you like explain what Dis Irae is? Mm. Oh um, yeah, well, it's basically a visual novel um, about uh, Nazis in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're, they're not like, no, they are. They're very bad. They're very bad Nazis, which is, you know, kind of comes part and parcel of being a Nazi, right? Right. But basically, um, yeah, it, it was a very hot project. It uses a lot of uh, opera. It uses a lot of uh, classic literature references. Right. It's got stuff from like the Kojiki and you know what I mean? It, it's, 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 it's complicated. It, it, it's a very, it's, I would call it a purple. It's got a lot of purple prose. It's got a lot of mm. overly overly fanciful nature to it right um it's a good game though it's it's, it's very cool we we uh, ran a kickstarter to get it done in english right, right which was right. in itself a bag of worms mm. <laughs> how so <laughs> i see yeah yeah how 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 uh difficult was it because like most uh old older titles that were localized they were funded through Kickstarter, like for visual novels at least. Yes, um, yes. There were, and that was like sort of it. during the boomish of that, like uh, yes. doing that. Um, so how was that? Like how was like the whole Kickstarter process like that? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, I suppose it doesn't matter too much what I say at this point, given that the company... Well, 
died. I mean, you can only you can talk about as much as you want, but you know, I'll talk about what I'm comfortable talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, the Kickstarter had me worried for a while. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, it wasn't managed the best as it could be. The the PR team that they had behind it was not exactly stellar, to say the least. It was clear that in, in a lot of cases, they did not know what they were mm-hmm. selling, so to speak, right? Mm-hmm. So while we were sort of screaming internally and worrying if the project would pan out okay, um, it ended up obviously overfunding its goal by the end, right. uh, which was good. Most of it came in the last like couple of days, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which is actually, That's you great. tend to find that most Kickstarters get their most funding in the first few days and the last few days. Right. Um, but we definitely, uh, we hit our goal. Um, but towards the end of the project, I had to sort of, I, I basically volunteered to step in and I, I said, look, um, can I can I start writing the updated posts? Because you guys are, I mean, I've looked at your correspondence with the Japanese and, and that's not what they said. Like, mm-hmm. they, they were basically, they're basically completely misinterpreting stuff because they didn't, know the game so they didn't have the sufficient context i think they said at one point that there was going to be like an extra route in the game for one of the popular characters mm-hmm. uh rusalka uh, and i was like well no, no there isn't they're not going to modify any of that what are you what are you, what are you talking about but, but, yeah um, it sounds like it sounds like a bit of a, a mess but i'm glad it ended up uh good and it overfunded itself i believe it, it did it did it went well um and by the end of it uh, it was a successful release people enjoyed it uh, mm-hmm. I, I really love seeing people um, enjoy the game. Uh, and after that, the, the company, uh, Light, uh, contacted uh, me through our project manager and was like, oh, hey, we noticed how y- you did the thing with mm-hmm. with the actual um, fixing the Kickstarter at the end and stepping in to sort of salvage the situation as best you could. Right. Um, and then they offered me a brand management position uh, mm-hmm. to help... Uh, basically promote their properties in the West. Right. Uh, that lasted all of five months, maybe. <laughs> because, um, unfortunately, we did manage to get uh, a PDF of an art book out uh, mm-hmm. and a spin-off game, a DSRA interview with Kazi Lupe, mm-hmm. which I translated on my own. Um, we did get those out, but then, unfortunately, the company expired, like, overnight without telling anyone. So... Mm. There, there, we, there we go. That's crazy. <laughs> and so, that was, uh, yeah, the end of my brief brand management stint. Yeah, at least it was something. But um, uh, back to DC Ray, um, I remember you said something about fixing Hebrew or that there uh, was... Yes. So in DC Ray, there is a lot of uh, foreign language used. There is German, there is uh, Hebrew, uh, you know, all kinds, all kinds of stuff like that. There's some, there's some old Norse stuff as well, but it's right. mostly like the... But yeah, um, so we ended up going through it and uh, there were some parts of it that were off uh, that weren't quite right. Um, so we ended up speaking with the original writer and, and he, he basically consented uh, to us modifying the the already Romanized text to make it more accurate, basically. Mm-hmm. Like there's uh, the, the power scaling system because it's like, a, it's, 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 it's a tuny game. So it's got like battle stuff. It's mm-hmm. It's... It's got like a power scaling system, that kind of thing. So it's based on uh, it's based on Hebrew words, uh, you know, Yetzira, uh, Asia, Beria, um, and, and Atziluth. And we, I noticed that the way that he had written those words in the Japanese release of the game, uh, they weren't ro- Romanized necessarily wrong, uh, but they were Romanized in a way that was uh, inconsistent. Uh, uh. Basically, th- 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 there's one there's one way you can romanize it and like as a set in one way and he sort of mixed some of them up so uh we ended up fixing that so it was uniform right okay david i know you have a lot of uh experience with visual novels and things like that so i was wondering if you had any other questions or wanted to dive into this i mean any- uh for the most part i feel like visual novels are uh kind of like a subsect of video games so it's sort of like the same workflow, but like mm. it, it has to be like you have to have like a little divide because like you're not just translating, you know, text of the game, right? You're right. text you're translating the story of the game, right? So like mm-hmm. do you feel that translating that much text of like a like a visual novel, very dense visual novel as opposed to a game is difficult? Like which one do you feel like is more difficult in your opinion? <laughs> 
Steiner. What? You broke him. <laughs> you broke him, David. Broke him. Uh, which one do you think <laughs> is more hard, uh, harder, a visual novel or a, a video game? Like a, a visual novel. Uh, in terms of workflow, I they are ultimately they amount to the same. I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. I uh, I complete my brain just. You know, it's fine. It's fine. Mine, mine. Uh, in terms of difficulty, I would say that I, I, I actually think I prefer visual novels, if only because you are much more likely. To... <laughs> Sorry, I just read one comments. Uh, if you're, you're much more likely to um, to have communication with the Japanese side, right? right. Uh, mm-hmm. If you're working on a visual novel, I, I often think that that little extra line of communication can make all the difference. Um, mm-hmm. As far as understanding the text goes, having a better workflow, um, I will take. I, w- I would. I will gladly take any job where I can sort of consult. Uh, you know what I mean. I, I, a lot of the video game jobs I've had, they just sort of give you it, and it's a very disconnected process. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but with visual novels, you tend to find it's a lot more involved, um, and I, I generally prefer that. Yeah, it's because you mostly uh, it's like in involved with the fan community because visual novels kind of yes. got their start with the fan community so right. like a lot of uh, visual novel creators or companies are just like you know either doujin maker like they're just like you know they're yeah fan uh, they, yeah i mean it, it varies depending like as i say because there are large companies with visual novels as well and, right. and you're right it, the communication goes down you mm-hmm. tend to find mm-hmm. the larger a company is so do you also mm-hmm. Do you also get to like coordinate with the translators um, more? Do you feel like on yeah, the- um, yeah. Uh, generally, on multi-translator projects, uh, we'll we'll make a chat room. We'll make like a group chat, and we'll 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 establish terms with each other. We'll make like a glossary that we can all consult at any point, mm-hmm. uh, and it makes the experience a lot more streamlined. I haven't been on a project where I was completely disconnected. I think from other translators on it. Yeah, and I can't think of any projects where I've been on where. It's just been like me doing my thing, and then no contact yeah. with anyone else. So I, I feel like if you do that, uh, you're going to compromise the text oh, severely. Definitely. Because sure. if you if if you aren't cohesive, if you aren't united, you're. I mean, if you don't know how someone else handled the text elsewhere, you're, you're basically up without a paddle, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that sounds good. I think we basically hit on visual. <laughs> unless there's anyone in the chat who has questions about visual novels or uh, Kanisha or David, we have anything. Otherwise, I think we could go on to um, some of your light novel translation work. Oh, and, okay. Light novels, yes. Yeah. yeah. And just to ask you another loaded question and break your brain, maybe, uh, okay. what is a light novel? Just for people who don't know, because uh, you know there might be some people out there who've never even read one before. So what is it? What's a what's a light novel? In, in general, um, it's it's well. I mean, you can see it up on the the uh, <laughs> yeah yeah. You can uh, see it up on the screen here. It's basically it's it's an adopted Guasiego term. Uh, it's it's a it's it's light for a novel, basically, right? Mm-hmm. It's small. Light. It's pocket sized. It's on the go. It's it's generally a literature for young adults, right? Mm-hmm. It's 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 not you know you're not carrying around like War and Peace, right? It's, <laughs> <laughs> or like doing those people like they cut their book in half so they can like read yes. the screen and stuff like that. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so that's generally what it is. I've been translating those for four years now, ever since. Uh, yeah, early early twenty seventeen. Mm-hmm. So how did you get into you know how did you get your first light novel translating jobs? How did it lead up to that? You know what is the process like and the formats of the scripts? I I want to know it all. Uh yeah um. So, how did I get into it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, how did you get your first light novel job, or how did you, <laughs> you know? My brain's really starting to just go burr right now. It's, it's really just... Yeah. <laughs> uh, We're just going to overheat your brain, Steiner. Yeah, um, okay, so basically how I got into light novels was in um, late 2016, I want to say. Okay. Uh, <laughs> in late 2016, I there was I noticed that uh, Occultic Nine, uh, a, a light novel series called Occultic Nine, was getting translated, right. and that's by the guys behind Steins Gate. And, and at the time, right, we're still wanting to get Chaos Head out. Okay, mm-hmm. we're like, maybe we can, maybe I can check this out. Maybe I can see this company that's got a tie to the the, the Steins Gate people, so I can 
maybe get in good with them and, and try for Chaos Head again, right? Mm. Uh, it's been many years. It's been many years at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, still holding out a little bit of hope that would, it, you know, in, in time be dashed. But, um, right, I mean, that's just how the business goes, right? But basically, I, I realized that the, the light novel series, um, Occultic Nine, was being translated by a new company called J Novel Club, right? And I was like, ah, what, what is this? What is this club? What is this J Novel Club? So I, I sent an email. <laughs> I sent an email to the um, to the the owner, uh, and he messaged me back saying, uh, "We don't have any posts open." Right? Like I, I sent him basically asking for like if there was any anything I could do, any any jobs available. He said nothing available right now. Maybe I'll buzz you back sometime. Right. He did buzz me back a few months later uh, with an opportunity to uh, do quality assurance on uh, the Occult of Nine books, which I. I overzealously edited them a little bit, and then a while later, he's like, "Hey, um, do you want to do a translation test?" This is in early 2017, I believe. So I do, I do a translation test. I pass that. Uh, he says, "Okay, next stage, uh, oral interview." So I do the oral interview, um, and then he's like, "Okay." At the end, he's like, "Okay, you passed. So um, we're going to put you on a series. Uh, let me just show you which we have currently available." And he shows me like a whole bunch of series, uh, and one of them's uh, in another world with my smartphone. And then there's another novel series called Infinite Dendrogram. And he's like, "Okay, hey, pick one of these." And I'm like, ah, "I think I will take in another world with my smartphone. That that will never that will never get tiring. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I will never I will never wear on your soul every day." Um, <laughs> Two volumes later, twenty-three volumes. Who knows? Well, we're, we're, we're twenty-three volumes in right now, and four <laughs> years into the oh, world boy. with my smartphone, and the story continues. <laughs> the story continues. So, <laughs> so um, uh, a few months. Uh, we, we basically did very fast schedule for the first five to six uh, volumes of In Another World with My Smartphone. I did one volume every six weeks. So every one and a half months, I was releasing one volume of wow. In Another World with My Smartphone right, right. for the first six volumes, I believe. And then um, after that, uh, there was a case where they, they, they finally got someone on Infinite Dendrogram and he translated half of the book um, or about, I think, a third of the book, half of the book, and he suddenly had a dip. He had to, he had to dip out. I don't exactly know the reason um, mm-hmm. off the top of my head, but Sam came to me and he said, hey, you've been um, translating Isekai's smartphone very fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, could you fill in and finish this volume of Infinite Dendrogram for me? Mm-hmm. Um, we'll, we'll take you off it at some point. Um, and... <laughs> And so I, I, I pick up, I pick up, uh, oh boy. Um, and, and now we're on volume, I believe 14, 13. Uh, I'm still going, I'm still, but I love, I love that series. So it, it, it did, it did pay off. I, I, I really love infinite dendrogram. So, um, <laughs> uh, that, that, yeah, so I got into that. Um, <laughs> So you ended up on both, basically. So first yeah, you- I, I, and I started translating both, and it was an average of one volume of each every eight weeks or so, well, every um, eight to ten I, weeks. I have a question because I think the way that J Novel Club does their uh, their novels is a little different from how everyone else does their novels. So, mm-hmm. like, what yeah. what? How is that like getting like these novels to translate like in? in Excel spreadsheets, basically. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm fine with it. I personally like it because it's Excel. I'm used to Excel. Right. Uh, yeah, up on, up on screen right now, there's a example of, this is a passage from Infinite Dendrogram Volume 2, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So basically, um, the workflow is simple enough. Uh, with, an, with Infinite Dendrogram, I... Am I still manually inserting line breaks? I'm sure you there's a are. tool for that. You are. I remember asking oh. you about that, and you were just like, oh, oh yeah. uh, you know, they, I was like, oh, they have, like, a document converter now. He's just like, you're Okay, what? yeah, so, um, <laughs> yeah. For the last four years, I've been, you see the the, 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 the slash NP? NP? For the last four years, I've been doing that after every line. Yeah, and the, uh, manually. the uh, EM and stuff like that. Yeah, oh, hold the emphasis. Yeah. What does that mean? What does NP mean for? It's for a line break. break. It's a line break, it, yeah. But just a 
Yeah, wow. So, yeah, it's like, so it stops being like one big paragraph, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I realized like a year too late that I was, I was still doing that when it was now optional. So yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. if it makes you feel any better, when I when I joined JNC, I was still doing it this way, but they had transitioned and I had no idea. So I was just like, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, I, I was I mean, no, one, no one gave me the memo about the the transition, no right? So. <laughs> That was before my time, so I have no idea. But yeah, most most uh, translators oh, right. yeah. at uh, J Novel yeah. um, do Google Docs, but that's you know Google Excel, you know. No, I, I still do my work in Excel because it's just what I know. It's yeah, just I it's also, just where I'm. I also do it in Excel just because it's easier to see whether or not like you're missing a line or not. You know yeah. I mean? Like if you can see every line like lined up to the the English text, it's a lot easier to keep your mind. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Right. In my for me, opinion, at least. For me, that would be hell just because, like, the spelling errors, like, it doesn't show you the yeah, red. Just, yeah, I would be like, downfalls. That would be yeah. Um, what oh, was you saying? I don't know. I, was, I, I saw your brain derailing, so I was going. <laughs> brain is gone. <laughs> uh, we're talking about, you know, your start with smartphone. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, but as I say, this this is the exact example. Mm -hmm. Um from Infinite Endogram Volume 2. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's, it sort of shows a visual representation of how the actual lines are written. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, um, wait, what is count blank brackets? What is that? <laughs> you tell me. Oh my God, is that a thing? What does that do? <laughs> Which one? No. What? Stein. Hang on, I, I, in the comments, that can, that oh, equals count blank. Yeah. Oh, it finds the lines you skip. Sweet. Oh, okay, that's I pretty see good. What you mean. Oh, 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 oh. It does the line. Oh, that's Jan. What's up, Jan? <laughs> hey, Dan. Glad to see you here. Yeah. Oh, nice. um, oh, hang on. Someone in the chat asked a question. Which one? Uh, no, scroll down. He's, he's a recent one. Uh, oh, you got a is question this... for Steiner? That one? Oh, Steiner. Oh. No, no, the pink guy. The pink guy. Oh, sorry. Right, the novels were based on web novel versions. Any insights into differences? In context as a light novel translator yeah okay so it varies it's gonna rapidly vary from title to title um, in the case of uh, smartphone the author adds one to two new completely new unique chapters per volume uh, mm -hmm. as, as a transition yeah. from the web novel and those are like those those are side stories which I translate uh, as interludes basically mm -hmm. they're little bonus stories with extra content uh, for the most part, the content in Dendrogram hasn't changed much, but he has rewritten whole chapters before. For example, um, there's a chapter in Volume 3 that in the web novel is from one character's perspective, but in the light novel is completely rewritten to be from another character's perspective. Um, and starting with Volume 12, I believe, he is now introducing a new character completely into the work. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Come back to the webinar. Another question um, right under that one. So, uh, got a question for Steiner. Aside from works you have been involved with, what is your favorite uh, isekai light novel manga or anime? Cheers for your hard work. Ooh, okay, this is a hard one, man. Um, favorite isekai? <laughs> it has to be in another world with my smartphone. <laughs> no one that you need to buy. Right I think now. we worked on that one. <laughs> no, no. Um, it, it's it's hard. I, I enjoy uh, I enjoy uh, Baccarina a lot. Um, you know the, uh, what's the, what's the yeah. My, my life is a villainess, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That that one's really fun. That's what it's about, a really fun. Uh, Sword Art Online. Oh, so that's not an isekai. It's pretty much an isekai. I mean, it's kind of an isekai. I actually unironically enjoy Sword Art Online, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, um, yeah, he's a guy, uh, jobless reincarnation is pretty good. Uh, Mushoku mm. um, oh, that's a yeah. good one. Um, you know, and I started watching the, the, the one where she's a spider. That's, I think it's airing this season. I started watching that one. That's kind oh, of funny. The, the Kumo one? Yeah. Yeah. It's called? Mm -hmm. I forgot what it's called actually. <laughs> I know it has Kumo in it and that's about it. Yeah. 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 Well, I think, have, oh, people are saying oh. thank you for the answer. Well, thanks for the question. Oh, I've got um, another question. That's it. What is that? Uh, if you could be an isekai protagonist, what she, would you like to have? <laughs> um, just like a button that I press that lets me win. <laughs> press the win button. I mean, that's basically what all these powers boil down to, right? The win button. Yeah, this is 
Pretty much. Yeah. I would imagine. You, is, uh, 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 can, can you just give me one second? I'm sorry. No is it a cat thing? Is it another cat? Yeah, I just need it for like a second. Okay. Only if you're bringing your cat. Yeah, sure. I'm sorry. He's not sorry. He's not sorry at all. He's not sorry. <laughs> out. He was like, I'm done. I'm so done being asked these questions. It's fine. I mean, I we got a billion other stuff about Dendrogram here. I'm, I'm really excited to dive more into oh, yeah, that. Yeah, like once, uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> once he comes if he, back. If he doesn't come back, I, I okay, I'm going to guarantee either with a cat or in a chocobo suit. Yeah, <laughs> he's been doing this thing where he he dips out and then comes back dressed in another silly hat, um, or as a frog, or as a frog, yeah. so that... or a bird, yeah, or bird, yeah. or you know, like he's just been he's been toying with our souls and emotions for the past week, you know, <laughs> um, so yeah, trying to get this set up and everything, yeah. Oh my gosh! Someone said the cube is he going. Was gonna, yes, oh, we boy. all know the cube. We all know Everyone that. Knows the cube now. I can't believe that's lore now. Is that's Slainer has this cube that is slightly heavier than you think it would be. <laughs> oh, it's that. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. I wasn't talking about the cube. What were we saying? Nothing about nothing. the cube. At least we said nothing uh, about the cube. What? Anyway, so now that you've come back, I don't know what sort of cat issues. I'm, I'm glad you're not in a bird suit, but. We have. If they were in the frog cloak, it's fine. <laughs> I have some questions about infinite pentagram with you. So okay. I wanted to ask you about your communication with the Japanese editorial side. I know that you had some uh, stuff going on with that. Ah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So um, infinite pentagram is is a pretty unique case um, because. Uh, I, I actually communicate with the the editorial side on the Japanese. I've, I've even spoken to the author a couple of times. Mm. Hang on, someone asked for the tungsten cube. It's right here. It's deceptively heavy. <laughs> um, <laughs> but basically, uh, infinite dendrogram is uh, somewhat more. Um, it, it's different. For example, in the case of smartphone, I, I the author doesn't really engage with it uh, in English, and that's fine. I mean, most most Japanese creators don't really engage with the translations of their products. No. Um, but in the case of Dendrogram, I'm very lucky because the author seems to have a vested interest, and so does the editor. The editor of uh, Hobby Japan is a huge fan of Dendrogram, so you can kind of tell that he really cares. Right, right. Um, so I've messaged him before. Like, I think the first thing I ever messaged him about, actually, let me check what day that was. Yeah, the first thing I ever messaged him about was um, a term in the first volume, uh, I believe. I wanted to know, and yeah, it was on the June June seventh, twenty seventeen. Uh, I wanted to consult the author about whether one of the spells was meant to be first heal or fast heal, mm. right? Because because the Possible. the the phrasing was ambiguous, right? right. Mm -hmm. um, mm. And it did end up being first. Mm. So, All right. yeah, and I I wasn't sure because it, it was applied in a situation where rapid healing would have been useful. Right. So. Right, right, right. Um, but I digress. Um, I communicate with the Japanese side, and they have occasionally commented on my work as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's nice. Uh, for example, uh, in the most recent uh, published volume uh, of Infinite Dendrogram, mm -hmm. uh, it is... Do you want to pull it up? Uh, this one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So if you look here, you can see that this is the uh, title for the most... Uh, recent volume of Infinite Dendrogram. Mm -hmm. uh, and in Japanese, it's uh, Bataru of the. Uh, bo you know, I'm not going to say it like that. Battle of. Borparu Bunny. Bunny, right? Mm -hmm. Battle of Vorpal Bunny. Mm -hmm. But in English, I translated this title as Vorpal Rabbit, Vorpal Hare. And this is because uh, the title refers to two characters, right? Mm -hmm. um, and one character is represented by uh, a white rabbit, as in Alice in Wonderland. Mm hmm. And the other character is represented, um, is uh, represented. It's represented by a white rabbit, a white hare, as in the white hare of Inaba, which right. is uh, a Japanese legend. Right, right. Um, but because the distinction between rabbit and hare in this case is not present in the Japanese text, um, I obviously had to write one as a hare, the hare of Inaba, and the other as a rabbit. Mm -hmm. So I have to differentiate these two when I translated the title. Mm -hmm. And. Um... Because, uh, you know, this is sort of like uh, extended wordplay, it's like 
you kind of have to dig know the context of this in order to even yeah. translate it yeah i mean if, if yeah exactly right yeah it you need to you need to know what you're working with basically uh, there was a similar case um, for one of the, uh, I think it was volume nine, actually, uh, where the where the uh, author commented, uh, sorry, the, the editor and the author both commented on the title that I did there. They thought it was an interesting approach. Um, the Japanese uh, for volume nine is uh, Sohim Rambu, mm-hmm. um, which is like, you know, two, a pair of princess crazy dance right <laughs> yeah. you know it's like <laughs> um but i ended up i ended up localizing that as a blue blood blitz which mm. uh was a very punchy title i thought mm. um and basically the, the japanese agreed they, they, they thought that it was a very unique play on the title um so i went with yeah blue blood print uh, blue blood blitz for and yeah again the alliteration was fun right uh, <laughs> and it, it generally worked um the japanese side thought it was novel uh and you know everyone gets a pat on the back uh, everyone wins right um but in general like so here here is actually some of the uh the con uh conversation i've had with the japanese side um so on the left this was me explaining to the editor precisely why i'd used hair in the title of uh, the most recent volume mm. uh, and on the right was a message from the author about that about his appreciation uh, because he's noticed that the fans uh, of the english release are you know very vocal about how much they enjoy it and he's very happy that mm. uh, people are enjoying it in english as well yeah that's uh it's very rare that you get this kind of interaction with uh the production side of like at least with yeah. manga and novels and stuff like that usually like I know that I've like I, like when I've worked on like stuff like Kaiju Number Eight, I got like followed by the author of that, and I wanted to you know shit myself. I was like, oh, like it was yeah. it was crazy awesome, <laughs> like just to like even like have him like sniff my my hair like from afar. I was just like, oh yeah. my god, that's crazy. <laughs> so like, I can't the, um, um, like it, it must be like really like flattering to have someone you know give you problems. yeah it, it, it's a crazy good feeling honestly it feels really good um because as you said it just doesn't it just doesn't happen right no it doesn't yeah, um. <laughs> that happened to me yet. yeah that's that's awesome and so um, I, yeah sorry oh no i was wondering so you originally reached out to the author just because you're like oh what the hey like maybe- yeah i'm like hey is this first heel or fast heel right and then it just sort of developed into a regular ongoing communication right, right. um which is nice. I, I think it's nice because, again, I don't like to bother the author too much. I don't want to like I, I don't message yeah. him like every week. You know what I mean? Because you don't you don't want to toe a line. You don't want to get too chummy, right? I mean, at the end of the day, it is a business associate right. relationship. Right. Exactly. Um, you might be a huge fan, but you can't let that overshadow your actual, yeah. you know, behavior. Um, yeah, for Ooh. the most part, though, it, it's it's a cordial sort of exchange. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what was I saying? It was the son of the author. Oh yeah. So the official Dendrogram uh, Hobby Japan account follows me on Twitter, um, which uh, is a bit funny because um, because because Hobby Japan publishes smartphone as well. And one time I made a tweet about how how I hate this one character in smartphone, and maybe they won't notice if I just write her out a smartphone. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy replies to me in English on the Dendro account saying, but you can't. <laughs> and I, I'm not replying. I'm like, ah, oh, Jodan, jo- like, like, Jodan, Jodan, Jodan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, no. Honky Janai, Honky Janai. He, he got it though. He did, he did get that it was a, it was a joke. <laughs> They're watching. They're watching. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I want to go into some smartphone um, examples, if you have any. I knew there was uh, something about a cockroach, G. Go oh, oh, yeah. Right. Okay. So, if you could get so into smartphone, is... what translating that is like, and also this cockroach example you want to mention. Yeah, so smartphone's easy to translate. It's it's very simple. Like, the, the, the there, is, there is obvious differences in complexity of writing style when it comes to Japanese text. I think more about infinite dendrogram than I do about smartphone. Right. But that's not out of any disdain for the work. It's just that I don't have to think as hard. Um, it's, so it's written, written in a very... Written. Okay, simplistic, yeah. It's so. written in a very simplistic style. Literally every 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 kanji in, in smartphone has furigana, every one. Um, 
and that's like that's not the case in Dendrogram, for example. Mm. Um, it does vary. I mean, there are some Linoles that do that as well, but um, uh, smartphone's super simple, um, uh, and it's very easy to write. It's very leisurely to write. Right, right. right. Um, uh, and I will say that keeping track of all the characters mm. has been <sighs> an experience. It got to the point where a fan basically made a website to keep track of all the characters. Um, he uh, he stopped around volume fourteen, but the count was still over three hundred. So, <laughs> oh my it, God. it's a lot of keep track of. And when you want to make character voices distinct, uh, it can be a bit difficult. Um, mm. You know, like I, I I hope I at least gave all the wives because he's got nine wives. So, uh -huh. I hope I at least gave all the wives um, good voices. Uh, I made bad decisions uh, for <laughs> speech distinction before. Just about to ask. Like, <laughs> Gonna, you know, let's not let's not get into that. Actually, let's forget about that. <laughs> well, I mean, can we? I mean, can I at least ask uh, about the uh, you know the Italiano accent? Yeah. So yeah, okay. So sometimes you're tired uh, and it's like two a.m. <laughs> and you've been translating smartphone for six hours and another character shows up with another voice and you're like, holy shit! Let's just turn them into an Italian. They won't come back and then they come back <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so it, it, it's bad. Mama it's me. bad, right? You know, um, it doesn't so, happen often. I'm guessing there's. The, I'm glad she's not a. I'm glad she's not a major character, at least. But she does sort of have a little bit of a, an Italian flair, right? <laughs> <laughs> she did literally say "molto bene" once. I made her do that. That was that was bad. I'm a, I'm a bad man. Um, I say it's all for the preservation of the work. You know, to get, you're to you're right. Experience. One day Italy won't exist, and this book will be all the half left. <laughs> It'll just be a crater in the ground. The boot will be gone. <laughs> but let me go back um, to the, that cockroach G example. Oh I yes, yes. Gotten that idea. Oh yeah, no, no, no. We'll definitely get rid of that. That's actually an interesting um, highlight for me because it reminded me of a. It reminds me of the way people read fan translations um, versus how they look at professional translations. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so back during my early, early, early days of, uh, translating, okay. uh, fan manga and stuff like that, right. there was a bit in one of the Steins Gate, uh, spin-off manga mm. where a cockroach shows up, right? And cockroach in Japanese is a gokiburi, right? Um, and a lot of the time in, 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 in media, or just in general reference, they will just use the letter G to refer to a cockroach, right? Mm -hmm. So I remember distinctly that back in my early days, um, when that came up, I just left it as G because I don't know why, because I don't remember that far back. I just remember that I left it as G. Right. Um, and it's just one of those things you do. And I've seen it happen in other fan translations as well. So fast forward several years to Infinite Dendrogram, sorry, I might have been Dendrogram, what the hell am I talking about? To In Another World With My, it's cause they both start with the two letters, they start off, they both start with in, in, in Another World With My Smartphone, and Infinite. back to In Another World With My Smartphone. Um, I get a comment in the forums at one point, mm. uh, someone was like, great chapter, I didn't understand the part about the cockroach though. And I'm like, what's he talking about, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I looked through the chapter and I realized what happened was I referred to uh, God is in this book, by the way, the character of God, God is in this book. Right. Um, I referred to God as the big G, but the guy reading it, obviously through exposure to Japanese media through fan translation, read it as the big cockroach because <laughs> he, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah right. He must, he, must have, he must have mistaken yeah. it for the big cockroach instead of realizing that I was just referring to God as the big letter G. Letter you know G, what I mean? Right. It's a common euphemism yeah. in, in English, too. Like you say, yeah, I'm exactly. Gonna, I'm going to like, oh, I better get this right. I'm going to go see the big G after this, right? Like, right. Yeah, exactly. That kind of thing. So I thought that was a very interesting sort of linguistic idea. You know, the, the idea that he read it that way. Right. Um, Solely due to overexposure to these kinds of half lidded translations, like I used to do, right? right? And um, I actually wanted to, uh, to, you know, ask, like, so what do you think that that is like? So like, people are so used to that kind of fan translation, very stilted, like kind of awkward, and like 
overly literal translation of of their novels like and mm. how is that like different from like you know what we're doing or like what you're okay doing? so when when you look at japanese text you can scan your eyes over it and yeah we'll pull up the slide here yeah. so this is a small passage from infinite dendrogram volume two and we, we provided examples here so when you scan your eyes over the japanese um your brain can easily convert it into a sequence of more you know literal style i'm doing air quotes even though i'm not on camera right now <laughs> but you can do a, a more literal style right mm -hmm. uh, where this is literally what the the Japanese text is saying structurally as well, right? So you can see in the middle here. But then if you look at the finished product, it obviously deviates from the literal here because when translating a scene, you, you, you don't just rely on the literal structure of the text. You have to use your own narrative prowess to mm. interpret into English something that better encapsulates the feeling. Uh, and in, in in that in that case, if you get the right vibe, I think you're doing the translation right. You tend to find that a lot of translations, especially light novel translations, right, um, mm -hmm. uh, fan translations rather, don't either either don't stop at, like they either do stop at the second column or they only go a little bit further. Right. Or in some cases, they don't even go all the way to the second column. They just leave Japanese words in, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And I. I feel like doing that while it does sort of make you feel like you're in on it, so to speak, mm -hmm. it doesn't properly convey the the narrative beat of the original text. In my opinion, um, and I understand this is a bit of a controversial one, um, I believe that in most cases, uh, there are definite exceptions, but in most cases that if you're leaving stuff like notes in or untranslated words, you are creating a interruption in the flow that the original reader would not have experienced. Right. Right. So if you can do your best to replicate the experience that the original reader had, mm -hmm. um, you're doing your job as a translator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And right. you said it was controversial because a lot of people want to use translations as sort of like a learning tool as opposed to yep. what they are, which is a uh, conveyance of, Thoughts. It's supposed to be a narrative experience, yes. Exactly. And I feel like if you if you constantly turn an author's work into a learning tool for someone who wants to feel like they're in on it, you're doing more of a disservice to the author's work than you could have been otherwise. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I, that's generally I, my feelings. I, I totally agree with that. Um, yeah. Just in general, just you you, you can't just uh, take one thing that makes sense to that audience, right? That makes sense to the audience that's in Japan, right? If you're reading that, yeah. cool. I know what I'm, you know, what's going on. But to mm -hmm. set, kind of like, you know, put a segregation between like, oh, you're either in the know or not is kind of like missing the point of even translating the work sometimes. Yes. Um, Very true. Um, I, think, I think, sorry? What's up? Oh no, go ahead, go ahead. No, I've completely forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, no, we've got a question in the uh, the chat. Uh, mm -hmm. It says, question for any translators who may be able to answer these days, is putting past work on fan translations ah. into your resume more helpful or detrimental okay. toward getting this yourself is, uh, hired? Yeah, this is, this is definite. I'm sorry, I started talking over you. Oh, no, no. no, no it's it's okay. fine. I'm awful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, in a general... Wait, were we not supposed to... David, were we going to have the chat on here, or, or was it no, going to no, be on? No, no, it the... shows up, but it just it disappears after a while. Oh, okay, that's okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so I'm sorry, I was looking at the stream. I was like, wait, where's the chat? No, no, no um, it just disappears oh, after a while. There it is. Right, right, but at any rate, um, I think the in the market has definitely changed. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it used to be a lot safer, um, although even then it did vary by company. If you're going up to a big publishing house, for example. Uh, or a larger company, and you're, and you're saying, "Hey, um, I used to, I, I, you know, I've done, I've done stuff of your work on the side. Um, hire me, maybe. Mm -hmm. They're probably going to say, "Hey, maybe stop infringing on our copyright." Mm -hmm. um, but then, for example, I would say that visual novel companies are much more open to the idea because they, many of them, have their roots in fan. Uh, fan translation, fan culture to begin with. Right. So all the visual novel clients I've worked with, uh, Sekai Project, Manga Gamer, um, Jast, Jast USA even, they 
probably wouldn't care so much right. so long as you can pass their test, so long as you can meet their standards. If you want to apply to one of those companies uh, with fan translation under your belt, I would say absolutely go ahead. Mm-hmm. But um, if you're wanting to go with maybe a publishing house like Yen or, uh, you media. know, stuff like that, um, or Seven Seas, I would not recommend coming to those companies You've generally got to read the atmosphere. You've generally got to go ahead and be like, yeah. what kind of company am I dealing with here? Um, yeah. If they're, you know, a bit more faceless, a bit more corporate, you probably don't want to don't want to chance it. Yeah. Um, but if they've got more of a public face, uh, that kind of thing, if if their staff are more talkative, that kind of deal, um, it might it might be worth inquiring. Yeah. I but I would say I'm... play it safe in general. Um, mm-hmm. But but like don't be ashamed of your work, you know what I mean? Like I I I'm very open about where I've come from as far as fan translation goes. I did definitely leverage a lot of that uh, back in the day to get like, you know, to make myself more noticed. Um, right. But I as I say, I don't list my fan translation work on my resume now, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but that's again largely because I have so much official under my belt now. Anyway, like I don't even list the official Aerogay I did, but. You know, I'm not going to shy away from it either, right? Right, of course. Right. I think it, that it, um, a general rule of thumb is, like, the more popular it is and the more, the big, like, if, if people know the name of the company, I feel like maybe you want to shy away from mentioning it, you know what I mean? Like, hey, I <clears> used to fan translate or whatever, like, you know, this property from, like, ten years ago that you probably don't give a shit about anymore, but, like... You know, they they still probably will look at it and be like, oh, I don't know about this guy. He's probably not on the level. But, like, a lot of companies, like you said, like visual novels and indie games and, like, you know, dope For games. most of those companies, they're only going to care if you can pass their test or not, basically. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and what I want to also say about that is, well, I interview translators for J Novel Club all the time. Right. And um, honestly, with us, like, as you mentioned, Steiner, it's like, you know, translating, like, putting up one part of each book a week. It's like, it's a pretty, um, you know, rigorous schedule. And also the translators, they have to be on top of their stuff. They have to know what they're doing. They have to have experience. And even if they, you know, the, the people who often pass the test are people who, if they did fan translation, it really benefited them and they worked hard to yeah. do the skit. You know, I'm not going to look at them and be like, oh, I'm not going to talk to this person. Right. Like that doesn't... Yeah, like, I mean... The fact that they're coming to me with their resume being like, hey, I want to go professional. I want to, you know, to me that that says all I think that's, that's definitely good, but I do know that there are companies that will oh, that will see see like that and go, how dare they put that on their, their resume? It, you know. it really depends. But I as I say, in the case of Christie, in the case of J Novel, uh, in the case of these companies that are more entwined with fan culture, they are absolutely gonna be okay with it. Ooh, we got a question for you that I think is really interesting. So what's an average work day like for you? <laughs> <laughs> this frog costume. Then um, yeah. <laughs> I spend uh, about seven hours crying on the couch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. About it, really. I, I don't do any work. <laughs> I, I, I outsource it to uh, central, yeah. Well, see, countries. me and Steiner, I don't actually... we, uh, we tag team. So when he's done with his seven hours of crying, off across the sea, bam, I get on my couch, I start weeping he openly. He's crying. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. When David's yeah. done, it's my turn. It's just like a... But anyway, no, really, what's your... He's just the only one that doesn't cry. Like, he's the only one not crying um, right now. I wake up in the morning. Okay. Sometimes Great. I wake up in the, <laughs> in the night. What the hell? What the hell? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what? What? Yeah. I don't know what's here, but it's happening here. I don't know. They broke, but anyway, Steiner. <laughs> Sorry. Average. Oh, average workday. Okay, average workday. Basically, I get up, I go to work, and then I go to sleep. That's that's the that's the gist. Mm. Like, no, that's many, not the answer. Okay, days? so I, I go through. I, I basically start looking at how much I've got on. Like I, I look at the schedule for my projects. I look at how many projects I was going on. I I allocate blocks basically for, you know, I'm going to do this much today of this, this much today of this. Mm -hmm. And I will either do that over a period of days or or like I'll break it into week, weekly quota, that kind of thing. I work 
from home and that can be a motivational issue sometimes like yeah. you you can get complacent because you're sitting around on your couch you you, you don't don't sit where you relax don't mm. like try your best not to sit where you're Good. where you chill um because you're gonna get distracted yep Yep. And you're going to start relaxing and then you're going to blink and it's three days till the deadline and you have 700,000 emoji left. So you have to say, oh, no, um, can I have an extension? And then they don't give you one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so then, then you start the crying, right? That's when the crying comes in. Mm-hmm. No, no, but basically don't, don't, um, don't set yourself a workstation. For me, I set myself a workstation. It's in my living room. It's at the coffee table. Yep. I put my laptop on the coffee table. Yep. Um, and I sit there until I'm done. Yep. Um, but I do take a break to eat in, at lunch, obviously. Right, right. So I take an hour lunch break. I, I try to schedule it like I would an actual work day, like, like you would in an office. So like right. you, you have time to work. You have time to goof around. I goof around a lot. I mean, I'm sure many of you have seen my Twitter. Um, you know, I, I, that, that sort of speaks for itself. I promise I'm not constantly going off. There are times where I am working. Right. Um, <laughs> but... but I, I, I'm currently waiting. There's a spare bedroom upstairs that I'm trying to get renovated. I mean, obviously I can't do it right now because of COVID, but mm-hmm. um, I'm getting it renovated into an office. And then once I have an actual office, I'm going to put a, like an actual computer in there. Right, um, right. Cause you've been, cause I've been using a laptop, laptop for... this entire time, right? What? You've been working from your laptop this entire time. Yeah. So I've been working from my laptop, I think for the last four, four, five years. Mm-hmm. I used to just be a desktop guy and then I started using a laptop out of necessity because my desktop went on fire and I had to stamp it out and I hurt my foot. It was a whole thing. Um, and then I bought a laptop and I was like, oh, well, I'll just work from my laptop. Uh, and then I didn't stop. I just never got a new computer. So <laughs> it was useful for me because I could take it with me uh, when I traveled. Like I used to travel a lot for conventions and stuff. Right, right. Um, but obviously there's none of that happening right now. So... Okay. I would like. I would like to. I think I would like to get back to a desktop. I think it would probably help, like get a mechanical keyboard, that kind of thing. It feels nice. Um, and that would that would be a good workstation. But definitely, if you're working from home, it, it helps to separate uh, your your play from your work because you will easily get distracted, and it can be very hard depending on like how your brain works uh, to keep yourself motivated, keep yourself focused. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the most part, I, I I try my best to keep to a schedule. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I mean like sometimes the schedule will go awry. You're not going to be able oh, to get yeah. that eight hours from nine to six or whatever nine to five. And yeah. And you're gonna have to. I mean, it's because we love what we do. Because if we didn't love what we do, we would not work for like thirteen hours straight on something. But sometimes you're just gonna have to do it. You know? Yeah. Sometimes sometimes you have to though. Like sometimes you're completely like blasted. You're like, oh god, why did I take that job? Uh-oh. Why did I take a job? And why is this job now starting two months later than I thought it was? So now it's all coming together and it's all hitting me like a truck. And I, and then you seize up and you don't, you don't work for a whole day. Like you're staring at the ceiling and you're eating like <laughs> cheese right out of the bag. You're just sitting there, right? Yep. And... Um, all right, let me ask you one last question. <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> we, we, we actually have a couple of questions in the chat yeah yeah well, i was just gonna ask one from here that we had a little bit ago and then maybe we could jump into art books i know we didn't touch those yet yeah. so yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk, i'd like to talk about those so for now um i'll ask this one someone uh called Sindrith says the agency i work for has a japanese staff member who helps us with linguistic issues is that normal slash common at all um Um, no uh in general not on freelance stuff um you generally do you you make do with what you've got you there aren't usually like people on hand to help with that kind of thing if you take a freelance contract it's you it's your editor and it's maybe a project manager if you have one right Mm -hmm. um I, I I don't work as directly with the with like the Japanese side of things anyway, mm-hmm. so it, it's more like you just sort of go with what you've got. And there was one project I was on where the Japanese side was very eager to um, uh, was very eager to it, it, have an input on on my work. So let's, let's say very. Said very politely, so they they very they very eagerly wanted to have input on the output, and 
didn't like it. Didn't like it that much because while they are the creators, they aren't necessarily going to know what works best in English. Mm -hmm. And you can, there is a, you've got to sort of tread the line of respecting their intent as creators, mm -hmm. but also acknowledging when they may be overreaching. Mm -hmm. So for example, in this game that I worked on, um, there was a company, uh, sorry, the, this was a few years ago, actually. So in this game that I worked on, um, the company wanted to change, like, so there's these creatures that appear in it, and the names are jokes in Japanese, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I translate the names so the jokes work in English, um, but they say, no, um, this isn't what it says. So they just, they just write it out phonetically, right? Right. And I'm like, okay, I mean, yes, you've Romanized the name, but you haven't Romanized the meaning or the joke. So right. it no longer means what it means to the Japanese reader. But so I don't like when oversight becomes overreach, so to speak, right? I think that as far as, as, far as creative input goes, the translator should be able to decide what works in the flow of the uh, work. work right. And the other part of the question that the person was asking, like if you don't have someone, you know, the Japanese staff member, member to consult with, then what do you do when you're truly stumped by something? Okay. Um, if you're completely, like, screwed and confused, you, you ask. You ask others for help. You try to reach out. Yeah. Um, you talk to colleagues, like, hey, need a fresh set of eyes on this, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, in general, the localization community is very friendly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you basically try to find a way to ask a friend without breaking the NDA, yeah. right? Right. And I mean, um, like, the thing about Japanese is it's like it's so context heavy that you sometimes, you know, you can give someone a totally random passage and they won't know what it means anyway. So, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You, like, you, there are ways to skirt that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's um, in general, if you do get stuck, you, you either ask. Ask the, ask the client, say, hey, this is screwing me over. Try and ask the Japanese side and pray that maybe they'll have some input. Right. But if not, you generally only have to rely on what you've got, which is the people around you. And fortunately, in my case, the people around me are capable and friendly. So <laughs> you know, I, I've helped people before and people have helped me in turn. Same. And also, um, I know some translators hire consultants like you know, native speaking, you know, native Japanese speaking consultants who, you know, when they really are stuck or something can, you know, they mm -hmm. literally, oh, pay. it's a professional yeah. you know, thing to do. Yeah. Your work is accurate. So, I mean, um, I haven't personally done that, but uh, I heard that from, from a few different translators and I'm like, hmm. it's, yeah, it's a little different, but in a similar vein, I actually called on a consultant when I was translating Raging Loop but it wasn't a Japanese consultant. A friend of mine is a um, historian, and I wanted uh, to best reflect Old English. I wanted to best reflect Old English because there is this part in, 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 in Raging Loop that deals with very, very archaic Japanese, and it's very obtuse. Mm -hmm. um, so I called upon this friend for assistance. I said, I've created a translation of this archaic Japanese into modern English, could you in turn interpret that into old English for me? Mm. And uh, in that regard, we managed to sort of replicate the same level of H. And I thought that was a fun little touch. No, that's definitely great because, uh, you know, that's a, a kind of a thing that you have to do with, with text as well. Like you can't, I mean, if you had translated that as modern day English, you would have just kind of glossed that. I would have lost the effect. And I didn't want to be like, you know, the stereotypical putting like ye, ye old and like that kind of thing. You know what I mean? I wanted this to be sort of authentically archaic. So mm -hmm. um, calling on my friend for that was, was, was quite fun. And the right move and you did your homework, you know? That's yeah, I mean, I, I try my best um, when the deadline accounts for it. Sometimes mm -hmm. you, I think every translator has projects where they feel like they couldn't do as much as they wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know a translator who doesn't do everything they can. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. They're not just like, well, this is out of my, you know, can't do it. Yeah. Uh, Bye. <laughs> I really wish I could yeah. do that. <laughs> okay. So I think it's time to move on to art book translation. I'm really interested in what you have to say about that. So what is it like translating 
you know, what was it like creating um, the art books that you did? What was art books are uh, deceptive. You you look at an art book, you take an art book job, you're like, hey, this this seems pretty easy, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and that's not. <laughs> <laughs> so, for example, the uh, the Shigenori Soejima and Peace Studio, the Persona Atlas art book that I did, um, it seemed very easy. Um, you know, I looked over it, I gave it, a, I gave it a brush through, and it was mostly just translating like annotations of images, uh, little little hand drawn messages from the creators and stuff for anniversary images, mm -hmm. and then like four fifths into the book, um, there's a long form interview. That's like 15 pages long and it's like goes into like production methods and, and stuff that I, I'm not fully familiar with. But, you know, you took the job. So you do the die, work. die, die here. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, so I take the job, you know, I, I translated it as, as, you know, I thought it was fine um, in, in the end. But then sometimes you get a lucky break, like the Hatsune Miku art book that I did was basically just. It's pictures of it's pictures of Vocaloids. Um, it's pictures of Vocaloids and uh, in the bottom right corner there's a little bit of Japanese text like which has the Vocaloids name and then like winter 2016 or something like that or the magazine that they appeared in and that was easy as hell that was like a really nice simple payday it wasn't that bad uh, the Dragon's Crown um, Dragon's Crown was a bit harder um, it had like a lot of little hand drawn like four coma style uh, comic books right mm -hmm. um and that that was a little harder. There was also like hand drawn annotations. I think it's a toss up when you have these because either the um, the handwriting is really easy to read, or it's like drawn by a spider that fell into an ink quill. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. It's yeah. like really hard yeah, to tell. Is this you want to bash your head? Off, off he the like wall. what is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then you can you can at least tell the client that you had a grievous head injury and that's why it's not done. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's a good um, but yeah, for the most part, uh, Dragon's Crown was a fun one. Um, I actually, for that one, uh, there's a large portion of that, that Dragon's Crown art book that lifts basically from the game. Mm -hmm. um, there's like, there's an art, there's an art feature in the game where it has like narration. Um, Fortunately, I did have a copy of Dragon's Crown at the time, and we had permission to sort of lift that from the game. Mm -hmm. So I played my copy of the game along with the the translation of that book and, and looked through the art, basically. Uh, and that was easy. It was just, you know, copying it down. But then, uh, unfortunately, uh, my PS Vita, which I was using to play Dragon's Crown, it, uh, you know, it saw the end of its days. It... it, it it lived out a long life, and then I dropped it on the floor, and it smashed into little pieces. So basically, uh, <laughs> I couldn't consult the game anymore. So I had to look up like YouTube let's plays and hope that people found the art that I was looking for. <laughs> so yeah, um, that was a fun one. Um, the but Sengoku. That's one. That's Sorry, that's that occasion. Like you know, you yeah. you had to do it. So that's we all take those various methods and ways of like. Yes. I have to find the scene. I'll go, you know, when I was Look, doing it up on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, I had to do that for like this one spell in Grand Blue Fantasy for the manga. Like I had to go into the game, but this. Specific... You have to. Yeah. I mean, especially if you're working on something that's multimedia, right? Because you want to keep it consistent if possible. Mm -hmm. That's generally what I try to do. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for the, the Sengoku Rants um, limited booklet, I, I I did that with Manga Gamer, obviously, and it was a great work because I'm a huge fan of the Ranch series. Um, so it was really fun to do, like, like, it wasn't just an instructional manual. I had, like, character drafts and stuff like that, little descriptions. Right. Um, and that was a really fun one to work on. Like, I, I, I didn't, didn't take me that long. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, in general, uh, my work on our book has not been hard, except for one that I can't currently mention that is yeah. it was a it was a project that he originally was going to give to me and then i was like mm, and then thanks david yeah i'm, pro I'm thanks, sorry <laughs> i was swamped my yeah, bad he, david uh, saddled me with death basically and i will never forgive him that's that's fine i'll i'll uh, it's, it's, it's you know it, it's a bit of a tough one it's a little bit more in depth uh, i'm not 
personally great with the hand-drawn stuff. Like, if hand-drawn stuff's a bit more scrawly, I'm not good at it. Um, but I make do. Like, I, I got it through slowly, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's as far as our book goes. They are <coughs> less difficult in general, but they're also less frequent. So you're not going to, like, get an easy payday out of a bunch of art books, right? Yeah. They're not as frequent a job. I mean, there's a lot of post-production stuff that goes into those after you finish the translation and they don't have as rapid a release cycle right. as stuff like light novels, which is basically my financial bread and butter. Like light novels are so rhythmic. They like I've translated like a volume of smartphone every eight to 12 weeks for the last four years, like clockwork. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's consistent cash. Yeah. Steady gigs are what, you know, pays our bills. So well, yeah, exactly. You, getting a steady gig as a freelancer is basically what you want if, if you're freelancing because at least that's money in the bank at least that's you stable as long as you keep it yeah and as much as it is like a passion project and like we you know generally we like doing this kind of stuff you know we still have to you know break even Make money. at least yeah we at least Live. break even right like we can't just be like yeah. living destitute you can't you can't just work for pennies forever like you have to work upwards yeah. and I, I consider myself lucky being where i am i live in you know, the north of England. I live in a relatively small town. Right. Uh, rent is not high, mm -hmm. and I do not worry about things like healthcare, right? Mm -hmm. But I know that a lot of translators, you know, uh, many of my American uh, associates, it can be a hard job to, you know, sometimes you've really got to work yourself to the bone to just make living expenses, and it, it can be really hard depending on the client. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I consider myself lucky in that regard. I have, I have solid clients. I have a consistent network, and relatively live on you know small means it's not very good so you mentioned your bread and butter but i know we have another form of media that we haven't talked yes. about yet so manga translation let's get right into yes, that. Let's talk about the manga right yeah so, so you're translating four different manga series right now at the moment right mm -hmm. at present i simultaneously translate four titles there is lona life in another world shed that skin ryokasaki san my dad's the queen of all vtubers and Infinite Dendrogram, which is, you know, the manga adaptation of that light novel they do. Okay, um, so what are the challenges uh, with each of those projects? What's the, like, team structure like? Like, what, what is all that? Mm -hmm. uh, what's the differences between Okay, them? so three of these I do for a company called Kaiten Books. They're relative newcomers um, uh, to, to the industry, but they are great to work with. Uh, the workflow is... Smooth as hell. I, I, mm -hmm. I coordinate directly with my editor. I talk to like the boss on Discord. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it's really easy. I get to, you know, I generally get creative control on the output. Right. My editor consults me if I need anything. I have a different editor on each, but um, basically they're all great to work with. Right. Um, I, I especially like the, my editor on uh, my dad's Queen of VTuber, as VTuber dad. Uh, he is. Uh, big into like online stuff like Twitch and esports. Right. So mm -hmm. it really helps having him on hand because we can talk about like what's, you know, like the appropriate level of shit post to put into it. You know what I mean? Right, of course. But, um, but it's it, like, that's a very zany net culture focused title that uh, has a lot going on in it. Let's go straight into VTuber Dad, actually. I believe you have a few slides on. So yeah, uh, so these are a few examples of uh, my dad's Queen of all VTubers. Um, Basically, it, it, I'm gonna, yeah, it's about a young boy who discovers that his dad is the ultra-popular virtual YouTuber Kizuke Ai, right? Mm -hmm. So it's basically cringe comedy um, with, with <laughs> the boy is the butt of the jokes, right? With a lot of internet humor mixed in as well. A mm -hmm. uh, great thing about this one is, uh, I mean, it's not as uh, obvious, I don't know, I think, I think, I think on the small screen there, but I actually have front cover credit on this one. I, I don't even uh, think it's uh, on this version. I, I got it from the part on your site, but... Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't think my version is on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so, yeah. But, but on this... So this has a physical release and a digital release uh, from Kaiten. And I have front cover credit on this manga, which is very uncommon very uh, in general. I mean, even back cover credit is uncommon for a yes, manga translator. Some of the time. Most, yeah. most of them can only... Mm. As far as credit goes in this industry, most... Um, most can only really hope for like the colophon page, you know what I mean, or, or, or some small mention. Uh, but 
I got I, I got front cover credit on this simply because I asked. I am trying to uh, change the game, basically. With Kaiten books especially, they've been nothing but accommodating. I know that they've offered other translators front cover credit as well. Right. I'm basically trying to um, create... Uh, a new standard. I'm, tr I'm trying to, by putting my name out there, I'm hoping that other translators, other people in the business, uh, you know, it, anyone um, can push for more visible credit because I think not only is the financial credit uh, important, obviously, there's also the social currency to take note of because you use your visibility to leverage more jobs. And I think that that's such a vital skill. I've been doing it for years. I've you know, I have a large social media presence. I have, um, I generally use that, you know, I throw that around but because I want to get more work. I want to be more visible so I can get more work. I enjoy what I do. And I think everyone in this industry would benefit. I mean, there are those that obviously deliberately use pseudonyms or, or keep themselves under the radar. Right. Um, and that's completely fine as well. But I believe that the option should at least be there, right? Mm -hmm. I believe that it should be an ability because at the end of the day, a translator is the one writing this text. I mean, they work with the editor, obviously, but um, I think that they deserve credit. I think that they deserve visibility, right? Mm. Okay. Yeah, and it's very different from how you, like, because you work pretty much directly with the people involved with, like, maybe... Yeah, I work very closely uh, with the people in, in Kai 10. So I have, you know, you know a bit more support there. Yeah. And I think it's great because, again, it, it, it's a company that started with fans. Um, the owner is a good friend of mine. He's a very nice guy. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a talented translator in his own right, actually. Uh -huh. But um, it's this Kai 10 especially is about putting the staff out there like they have a good staff focus yeah and, in, uh, and i want to normalize that i want to make that a normal thing i want to see other companies doing it as well i want to see other names i mm -hmm. think it should be a good thing you know I, like yeah, i know uh, I jk haru uh the physical release of that the translator of that did did get their name on the back of back cover which is nice right um i also i have back cover credit on um Luna Life and Ryokasaki san as well. Mm -hmm. But I wanted my name up on the front for uh, VTuber Dad because I, I, I had a lot of fun with it. You know, I think it's a great, a great story. No, I definitely agree that you should, you should be credited for your work. And uh, I think that um, a lot of the bigger manga companies are, they've kind of done that some, somewhat, but not to the point where it's become sort of like, you can have it like as an option, right? Um, yeah. It's usually a bigger name in the industry. Like, I know Alexandro Smith, everything that he's on, he, he was on before he formed his company. Yeah. He was on front cover, basically. It's like translated by Alexander O. Smith. It's like, all right, cool. You know, like, I work, exactly. you know, I work for, for Viz now, and, like, I, I get for the simulpubs, like, they, they put my name on there for each individual chapter, but, like, you know, I'm just going to be regulated to, like, the the credits page, which for me is fine, because I don't really want, like, I think that, you know, whatever, 2,000 followers is fine for me, I don't give a fuck. But, like, a lot of people do want that front page, uh, mm -hmm. you know, visibility, mm -hmm. because, you know, it kind of works to their advantage, and in all fronts. Um, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah. before we go into more uh, manga examples, we have a question yeah. that was kind of asked twice here. I think there were a few questions that we uh, yeah, that's that by, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of them here um, says, I know you've done a solid job of getting healthy over the past year. Advice for managing health and working from home? Um, so in general, health is, it's about what's up here more than what you've got going on mm -hmm. elsewhere. You've got to be in the right headspace to put the focus and commitment towards that kind of thing. I, I, I lost a significant amount of weight over the course of a year. And then over the last six months, I have put quite a, like a bit back on. I put like maybe 20 pounds back on, I think. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's not something I'm worried about like I would used to be worried about. Right. You've got to be in the right mentality. If, if you're looking to lose weight, um, you've got to plan. You've got to. You've got to have a. You've got to find what works for you. I mean, it 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 changes per person very much. So, I mean, this isn't 
necessarily pertinent to translation itself, but it, it is relevant to working from home because when you are working from home, there is less incentive to do things. Yep. Um, but there are things you can do at home. For example, there are body weight exercises. You can look up very easy body weight exercises. Uh, there are even games that make it uh, interactive, like uh, Ring Fit Adventure. I, I found very engaging, actually. It was a very fun way to get some daily exercise. Even I would say that the crux of it boils down to something is always better than nothing. Even if you do 10 to 15 minutes a day, that's still better than the zero you would have been doing, right? right. Even if you eat a little bit better, that's still better than indulging if you didn't want to do that, right? Mm -hmm. you, you don't have to shoot for success right from the start. Just start making slow increments, slow improvements. See where you get. So Kanisha or David, were there any other questions you noticed in the chat? I mean, we could go back to uh, that, but. Let me see. Uh, I think we could go to them again, or if people don't mind uh, reposting them, yeah. that'd be great. Well, 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 yeah, yeah, I think there was, where was, let me check. I think yeah, someone, also, asked, uh, someone asked, are translators good interpreters? Oh mm. uh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. That, that's and I would say that I would not be a good interpreter in any possible way. I consider myself a decent translator mm. um, of written media, but I do not think that I have the speaking skills right. that would necessitate being a good interpreter. You have to think fast um, on the fly. You, I, I just don't have the relevant experience. Actually, I even got an opportunity like a year ago, a year and a half ago, to be an interpreter at an event, and I had to turn it down because I just... I, I can't be trusted with that level of responsibility. I, I view it as a, a, a different skill set. Yeah, it's from the same vein, yeah. but e while my work involves sort of sharpening text and thinking about it over a period of time, being an interpreter requires you to think on the fly about what to say. Yeah. It requires you to actually verbalize it as well. Mm. Um, you know, you have to think. You have to jot notes on the fly as well you know you, you, you it's it's a different it's a different job like that's basically how i feel about it and, uh, i feel the same way and i think so i'm going to ask you one other question it's a pretty relatively new one in the chat and then i think we should go into our i think you have like three different examples of like fun translation things from oh yes yes some little fun things from uh, yeah. yeah so i really want to show everybody that and we're almost you know it's 342 so <laughs> it's almost, you know wow time flies but oh, wow, um, it's yeah, so we have like 20 minutes-ish left. So I'll ask the question in the chat, then let's go into your examples. But um, Tea Time, I guess, says, um, are there any fun questions you wish you were asked or would like to answer? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I guess... Cut me up, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I guess um, if... I'm not entirely sure. It, I, I always sort of... I suppose I prefer responding to questions rather than thinking of questions to answer, but... Yeah. Uh, okay, well, because yeah, I want to ask you uh, these questions about your um, <clears throat> translation examples. I think that's very insightful when we get to see on the screen exactly what... Oh, well, I'm, is, so. I suppose if anyone asked me about a, a regretful mistake I made, <laughs> even, deeper, even deeper than the, the Italian accent... Mm. It might be something that happened in in another world with my smartphone. What's that? Revolving oh. around a cat. Oh. Oh. Are we not going to go into it? His name. <laughs> Anybody oh. know? What you're talking about? Yeah. Or. <laughs> the cat is okay, so, I... <laughs> so one time during um, I'm just going to mention it. I'm just going to mention it because it has to happen. Okay. Right. Right. Someone said it. He said it. He said. It. Yeah, someone said it. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> okay. Um, so here's a cautionary tale about uh, when not to go too far, because sometimes, in the pursuit of the hunt, your mind overtakes you and you become the beast you swore <laughs> not to be. So in this case, I took a, a simple cat name and I transformed it into. An unsimple cat name. Mm. One loaded with lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> that was 
Actually, what was the original one in Japanese? Uh, Nyan, Nyan Taro. Yeah. It was a... Uh, well, the typical was a typical cat name. Generic yeah. cat name, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I ended up writing that. I was, I was, I don't know what the hell I was saying. I think I was phoning it in for a while, and I just like, you know what? This is a shitty cat name. Toya's an asshole. I'm going to call this cat Garfield. <laughs> and I called the cat Garfield, and... Shouldn't have done that, actually. I, I, I instantly regret it the moment it went up. Because someone in the, the forum was like, why is this cat named Garfield? It doesn't work. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Um, I still get shit about it. It, it, was, a stupid, it was a stupid decision. Um, thankfully, a non-permanent decision. Um, the moment I realized that, I, you know, you, you have that sort of sobering realization where you're like, you look at your hands and you're like, what have I done? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so I just changed it. I changed it to Mr. Mittens, which was a bit more appropriate for a cat name. You know what I mean? And that that, that ends the Garfield hell, right? <laughs> um. <laughs> I mean, you, I have to give you, give you credit because that that's some shit that I would never even think about doing. You like, go too far. <laughs> you, you take it too far. It's like th this is how you know Oppenheimer felt, right? Like this is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sure. Of course. <laughs> you uh, so, live by the sword, die by the sword. Yeah. For sure. Exactly. So let's go into your examples for VTuber Dad. Yeah, um, because you uh, you translate this in a not a very like a very uh, unliteral way, like a very uh, yeah. So this is a lot more relaxed. Uh, kind of, I, it's it's so heavily infused with net and internet culture mm. that. To translate it purely literally wouldn't fully function. So here's a visual example. Uh, this took like a little bit of research actually. So I'm reading I'm reading the manga as I'm translating it, and <coughs> I, I reach this part, and I'm like, wait, why is he mentioning a trumpet? What the hell is this? Mm -hmm. And so I start digging around, and I find out that I, I watched the old commercial, and it's just it's like I find this old commercial, and it's it's just a young boy gazing longingly into a shop window it's it's a commercial from the like early 70s mm -hmm. gazing into a shop window uh, at a trumpet and so this is what the reference is here it's him referencing a commercial from the 70s right and i'm like hmm okay didn't like i it's funny even in my search i found uh japanese people saying what is this referring to mm -hmm. so <laughs> Yeah, it's not a very... It was, so, so you can see in the translation here that I basically omitted the reference. Mm -hmm. Like, I found the reference, and I basically just deemed it far too obscure. Um, it, so instead, I reworked it. I basically went for more of a generic exclamation. Um, you know, don't fall for the siren song. And then I, later on, it's not visual... It's not a visual... Uh, oh! <laughs> it's not visible here. Uh -huh. All right, I've been talking for way too long. Um... It's not visible here, but uh, later on, I do like a little callback to this line to sort of make up for the lack of uh, a direct reference. Oh. Um, so basically, that's how it works. Um, I, I feel like if I translated that literally, people would just be very taken out. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. I mean, it, it, there's, a, there's also a time and place for it. I mean, like, it depends on like, this is very like modern day and like, you know, net. Exactly. This stuff. is a very, this is a very like 20... 2020s kind of manga, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's about VTubers. So like, I yeah. If it was something like maybe older, like you know, yeah. it was you, something from you... like the 80s or something like that, then it would be kind of like a 10 year off reference. But like, mm -hmm. yeah, and you oh yeah yeah that absolutely. Thing, you know, like if like the that. setting were were like in the time period, I would I would not change it. Right, exactly. But this is um, sort of like a uh, as a translator, you have to use the context. Uh, that you're presented with from the characters and the medium itself to make judgment calls on what's best to do narratively, basically. Mm, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then I know you have an O3 that- Oh yeah, the O3 experience, right. Yeah. So this this thing's like rife with net slang and stuff like that. Um, I, and when I'm working, I see this this part here and I I see a, like a comment on the scrolling, the scrolling screen and it says 03, and I'm like, yo, what the hell is 03? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about this for 20 minutes, and I'm, I just, what is 03? What's going on with 03? And I, at the end, I just sort of throw my hands up, and I say, well, you know what? I don't know. I'm going to come back to it. 
So later on, I'm washing the dishes, um, and I just sort of stop, and I'm like, "Oh shit, Osan, Osan, right, old man, old dude, <laughs> right." And I, like, I, you know, I turn, I, 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 I drop the dish, I scare my cat, and I'm just screaming at it. <laughs> You know what I mean? Oh, that O3, oh, that's it. Okay. So it's like, it's that kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. You can sort of see uh, here as well, um, the sound effect on the right panel uh, in Japanese. It's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's Biku, Biku, you know, like that, that kind of like twitch, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I went for seethe because she's like, she's absolutely seething, right? No, that's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So. Like you don't want to, you don't want to always go for like. So sound effects is I, I haven't got a lot to say about it exactly. Sound effects can be very hard, um, and finding the appropriate sound effect because sound effects work very differently in Japanese to they do in English. Right. Um, so you've got to f- try to go for the right kind of deal. Like uh, in a lot of cases, with sound effects going literal is not necessarily the right way. No, because then you'll have like like how do you describe light shining? Like you know, like you can't just say like. Light shining, like you can't. That can't yeah. be your translation, yeah. right? You know, right. it has to be something like sheen or beam, like something. It has to be like onomatopoeic. So, or or yeah. or sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes, like in this case, I really like uh, the fact that you use seethe here instead of like maybe shiver or, you know. Yeah, exactly. Like like, like she she gets really mad. She's a, like my one of my favorite. I think she's my favorite character actually. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. the mother, right? That. Uh, yeah, the mother. She's she's like she's she's. So that while the dad's like this ultra popular girly VTuber that everyone loves and admires, she's she's like a low tier trash streamer that everyone thinks is secretly an old guy. Right. <laughs> so it, it's really fun. And so I think there's one last example that we have here one. about a a poem. Oh um, yeah. Okay. Sakamoto Yoma. So in the original Japanese here. Um, we have a, a quotation slash poem by Sakamoto Ryoma, you know, um, very, very old reference, um, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, dating back to the, what, 1700s? Uh, Baku, the, Baku, the Shogunate, basically. Yeah, exactly. So here I ended up doing the, the huge brain approach <laughs> of transforming one 1700s man into another 1700s man. <laughs> Um, with, a, with a quotation that that both encapsulates the same level of feeling, um, but also is recognizable maybe more to a Westerner, right? Mm. So I feel like quoting from Invictus um, appeals to a more Western brain, right? Mm. But it still means that on on a, on a uh, feeling level, it still sort of transmits the same idea, right? Right. right. Mm-hmm. Because the the original quote here is is you know about a proclamation of you know self selfness selfness self. <laughs> selfness. <laughs> Look, I can write on a good day. I can write on a good day. I promise. <laughs> But um, look, this is why we have editors, right? Oh, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't worry, my... <laughs> but yeah, so, so this yeah. this was uh, sort of a, a thematic decision on my part. I'm sure other translators might have handled this differently, but you know, I happened to know the poem, and I was like, oh, hey, this actually kind of this kind of vibes, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and um, also and I... it's like a very it's like a well thought of like you didn't just do it randomly for jokes. Yeah, no, I, I, I most most of my decisions I, I actually think through, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like. I don't just, I don't, so pun Garfield aside, I don't just go. <laughs> okay, and in my defense, that was like two years ago now, okay? You've become a, a better man because of it, so. Yeah, you learn, you learn, you definitely learn. Um, with each project you put under your belt, you learn something new. I am constantly learning every day, and it was at my early levels, it, it's it's when you're at the early stages, um, <sighs> <laughs> it's at, it's at your early stages uh, where you think you know everything mm-hmm. that you don't think is hard, right? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. nowadays, I, I I I do I do definitely approach it with a lot more care and tact, and I I do learn. Like I learn some, like you don't think you have much more to learn when you have the most to learn, right? Mm-hmm. But right. I still learn more every day. Like I I keep dictionary I keep a dictionary extension up in case I like see something I don't recognize, I will, I will utilize Google to the best of my ability. You know what I mean? Like, not, not Google Translate, no. mind you. 
Okay. It's, uh, but like the you're, search end. You're basically doing the part where Google Translate pulls from everything else, but you're a human being, so you're not just going to pull crazy mm-hmm. random bullshit from like anything. Yeah, you, you put the research in, you put the time exactly. in, and it does right. ultimately pay off. Right. Right. Uh, oh, wait, actually, <laughs> I just remembered something really bad. Um, so, <laughs> um, if you don't have the relevant experience, um, like it, sometimes in something, mm-hmm. you might not be able to translate it as effectively. Mm-hmm. Um, you can put in the research, but if you don't put in the research and you just assume that it's okay, uh-huh. you're going to screw it up. Right. Like this one time okay. that I screwed something up really bad okay. in a volume of smartphone again. <laughs> um, uh, so I... There's a there's a part in 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 another world with my smartphone, um, where they play baseball, right? Uh huh. Mm. Oh. I'm I've, I've never played baseball. I don't know the rules of baseball. Mm. So you know what I did? I just assumed that it, it worked as the Japanese said. I used all that weird Wasaego words. I I, I I I translate it as is, and I translated it so badly that my editor thought it was bad on purpose and that the original author had made like a weird baseball game, right? Learns ball. But it was just a normal game of baseball. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I screwed it up so royally that my editor didn't notice that it was bad. So I'm assuming you then had to fix it and... and yeah, 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 you got to fix it out. So then you look up baseball and you're like, oh, wait, that's what that means. <laughs> <laughs> we live and learn. We live and learn. Oh, I know we have... Yeah. Four minutes left, so I actually have uh, maybe one or two questions that I think people might like. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, so we... what? Are... Go ahead. No, it's okay. So, uh, what are your thoughts um, about the uh, translation industry and community in general? And do you have any advice for people who maybe want to get into the translation? Um, leave. Go. Go. <laughs> No, no, um, no. Uh, if you want to get into translation, um, don't expect to make like a ton of money. You know what I mean? Um, you you don't really go into this just just financially. You can definitely make enough to live, but this is primarily an industry that survives solely because of the passion of its workers. Yep. Um, and I would say to a point where it's exploited fairly often, but. Um, it's a great community. I would say that I've yet to have a bad encounter uh, with, with with both fans and uh, professional colleagues, right? There are great people. Uh, people are always open to advice. I, I've seen fellow professionals who like offer mock tests to people. I, I've seen plenty of people offer constructive criticism. Uh, you know, I... I have helped many myself. I, I keep my email and my <clears throat> Twitter inbox open for a reason. If you're curious about something, you can freely message me at any point. I'm okay with that. Right. Um, but basically, it's a good industry. I think it, the fans are, for the most part, the ones I've met are wonderful people. Um, mm-hmm. I think it really varies based on how your involvement is. I mean, there's a lot of hyperbole and, and, and conflict over the kind of work we do, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but at the end of the day, I'm translating for the people who do enjoy it, and they are a great many, and they are all lovely people, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I, you know, I've received my fair share of criticism, and I think that's, there have been cases where it's valid criticism, and right. I have taken it to heart. Right. Um, but there have also been cases where it's clear that a person is approaching you with an axe to grind, so to speak, right? Yeah. Um, and I feel like you get a lot of that. I, I feel like there aren't many jobs where a lot of people will instinctively and by default assume that you have bad intentions, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I will say that you don't get into this industry because you don't like it, right? Yeah. I've been into manga since I was a little kid. I, I, I used to read... A4 scanlated printouts in middle school at lunchtime, right? Like just on paper because I didn't have the books, books right? right yeah. <laughs> so just we printed out the. Uh, I think I had someone print me out like a ton of Dragon Ball, and I would just read it on paper mm-hmm. uh, at lunch. But <laughs> basically, people 
everyone I've met has been a lifelong fan and it doesn't matter who they are, you know, um, men, women, whatever else, it, it, it doesn't matter. Mm. Um, well, we everyone have... is a fan. Just uh, one, we, oh, we've hit four o'clock, but I think we have this one very last question. Yeah, we're, we're good. Yeah, I know. We just have this one uh, question that I think is good. So any quick tips for getting that first big foot in the door? Um, talk. Like, you can, you can talk to people. Get involved in the community. Um, for me, most of my jobs now come from the contacts I've networked. Uh, most of my jobs come from the people I've met, the companies I've made in Rosewood. For the first big break, I, I got lucky. I basically attached myself to Steins Gate like a little worm, right? And then I built myself up from the the breast yeah. um, by yeah. engaging with the fan community, engaging with the companies, and doing mm -hmm. as much as I could. Yeah. Um, if you want your foot in the door, uh, just try reaching out to companies as well. I think right. there are companies that will just give you a test to see how you are. I know Manga Gamer gives people tests. I know J Novel tests people just mm -hmm. if they ask. Um, for the most part, at least. Um, mm -hmm. And just get involved because the people in this industry are very friendly. Um, mm -hmm. And for the most part, there are some people who like to keep to themselves, but they will absolutely give you the time of day if you come to them like right. in earnest. You know what I mean? If you're wondering. Mm -hmm. For sure. And yeah, I mean, that's why we're here, right? All of us talking about this and hopefully. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I've been trying for a while to sort of increase transparency um, on along as far as the process goes, as as far as the actual job goes. I try to be as open as possible as I can within the confines of my non-disclosure agreements. You know, if right. if someone asks me about a project, I will tell them how it went if if I can. Right. If mm -hmm. someone asks me just more general stuff for advice. I'm more than happy to share, and I, I know that, that I'm not the only one who's like that. Yeah, I, I feel like a, most of us in this uh, in this industry. I mean, this is the entire reason why this club, you know, exists is because we wanted a, a place for. People I, to come. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I've even like started like I recently worked on a project that sadly hasn't been announced yet, mm -hmm. but it had some very promising newcomers on it. Like the, these guys, this is like the one of their first projects for them and I worked with them and they were great. Like I was more than happy to work with them mm. and I really see them going places. So I love helping um, people get their foot in the door. If you want to message me uh, just to talk about things, I will happily talk things through with you. Mm -hmm. um, and basically if I can help you, I will endeavor to, if I can, I mean, obviously I can't give everyone a job, there are a limited amount of contracts that go around, but I absolutely do think of people when I can't take something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. All right. I think that pretty much wraps it up. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so enjoy. Ah, there we go. That's the end. There's... Yes. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. I can't believe you put the Garfield in there, man. <laughs> Hey, Ellie, is that the quest of you? <laughs> for everybody who... There I am. Yeah, for everyone who hung in there, this is what we had uh, for you, waiting for you. So um, thanks so much for uh, coming I, I, the stream. Yeah. I hope you all enjoyed. Yeah, I mean, uh, this has been absolutely uh, fantastic. And, like, when I was the guest and everyone was so supportive and, like, came and just, like, you know, all your questions were really thoughtful and awesome and i didn't have to shoot one person in the chat for being a bigot <laughs> and i'm so glad <laughs> i'm so glad that you guys have made everything so wonderful and pleasant and you know thank you steiner and that's absolutely what it comes down to i mean we do exactly. this because we want to engage with you guys you guys are when i talk about the community being great i obviously including you as well right. um I, I i feel happy to talk about this kind of thing because I guess we're all fans, right? We're, yeah. We all want to yeah. know more. We all want to do more. And I love sharing my job with people. Of it's just a whole lot of fun. Yeah. And yeah. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. We can't do, so thank you so much, Steiner. Yeah. Thank you, Steiner. Thank you. Woo! Woo!
awesome. Round of applause. Thank you, Kanisha. Thanks, thanks. thanks, David. And thank you, everybody who have been. Oh, and people are saying, uh, will there be more JTNY sorry, JTNYC talks in the coming months? Yeah, yeah, we're going to try to do one, one once a month, but I mean, or something like that. We'll, we'll try to make it work out. Um, yeah, it's, it's yeah. kind of. And every two or three, we'll figure it out, but there will be more. Yeah, we'll we'll try and figure out some. <laughs> we'll try and figure out uh, the lo logistics of everything because you know um, this is all running from my computer for the most part, so we got to get coordinated. Steiner is like a guest who's in another time zone at this point, so uh, yeah, you know, it's we have to coordinate with like people's schedules and stuff like that because we want to get some more cool people uh not to say that steiner's not cool but you know like i'm very cool he's very he had cool sunglasses on it was cool i have the flame glasses that's yeah. like epitome of cool makes, makes him look like you know uh 80s punk anime character i got the flame glasses i got the froggy mug like life is good <laughs> yeah man and, and you got garfield too so you know that's all that's all good too Yes. Um, oh, and someone in the chat, there will be a recording. Oh, so yes. David recorded all of this. Yes, so I have this recorded. It's going to be on the Twitch channel. So after this is done, you can watch it later. I'm also going to be uploading this to YouTube uh, because I have a local recording going right now. So uh, if all else fails, I can upload that. But you should be able to watch this freely and to your leisure uh, whenever you want. Um, it's for everybody. And also, if you could, anyone who's in the chat right now, uh, just, you know, follow the account. It's the most harmless follow in the history of the universe. It'll only come yeah. up when we're, you know, we're not going to be playing Minecraft or, like, you know, being, you know, Super Mario World or whatever. So just follow the channel. Follow the YouTube, uh, which is also JTNYC. You can, you can search it on YouTube as well. Uh, and, you know, we'll come up, you know, you'll, you'll see when we'll have another event because it'll pop up with a notification. Yeah, so follow, please. Yeah. If, yeah. if um, I ever come back for another talk, I might have more anecdotes, but hopefully no disastrous ones. Yeah, hopefully <laughs> everything, no disasters at all from the back end to the front end. We'll be ship and shape. Right. We'll ship this sh ship up, all right? You know, we'll swap the <laughs> No poop idea deck. what that metaphor we're We'll swap the I... poop deck, all right? <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah, this is great. Hey, okay, awesome. Thank you, everybody. You've been amazing. And till next time. Thank, you. Thank Have you. a great day, night, everything. Bye. Bye. Bye.